Hello. Today I'm going to read um, just a little bit of this book. It's called Finding True Happiness by Fulton Sheen. And we're going to read the back. I hope this um, is soothing and it can help you fall asleep as well as maybe give you some ideas or opinions uh, or different aspects about the topics in here. It says, are you perfectly happy or are you still looking for perfect happiness? Most people are still actively searching for true and lasting happiness, but you are looking in the wrong places. It's easy to be misled into believing that happiness is found in money, rank, or renown. While these things are not inherently bad and can in fact be used to do much good, they will, in the final analysis, not bring a happiness that endures. Once we realize that nothing less than a complete union with God will satisfy our souls, we will not let transitory things distract or disappoint us. According to Fulton Sheen, this is because you put no more hope in things than they can bear. You can cease looking for first-rate joys where there are only 10th rate pleasures. In addition to addressing the topic of joy versus pleasure and finding true happiness, Fulton Sheen also help us gain the right perspective on things such as loneliness and the secret of san sanctity. This brings us to our ultimate purpose, which is found in God alone. Only by losing oneself in God will we find our true selves and true happiness along with it. Now, you don't have to agree with the book. You don't have to agree with all the ideas. Um, if you just believe that there's a God, you can make your own choices and your own um, opinions about what has been talked here. Now the table of contents has the introduction. And then it has 16 little chapters. Finding perfect happiness, philosophy of pleasure, silence, repose, self-inflation, egotism, the enemy of inner peace, desire, sadness, moods, mental cases are increasing, loneliness, truth forgotten ideal, I'm sorry, truth forgotten ideal, patience, contentment, joy, the will, the secret of sanctity. I won't read all of this. 
this might be boring to a lot of people. It's actually a pretty interesting book. It's very thin. It's a very thin book. 75 pages totals the amount of um, the chapter. Let's just flip through some pages. Chapter 1 Finding Perfect Happiness question goes, are you perfectly happy or are you still looking for happiness? When you got what you wanted, were you happy? Philosophy of pleasure. We all want happiness. We should all take the sensible step of learning that there are three laws of pleasure which, if followed, will make the atta attainment of happiness immeasurably easier. The first law, if you are ever to have a good time, you cannot plan your life to include nothing but good times. The second law, pleasure is depend, is deepened and enhanced when it has survived a moment of tedium or pain. Third law, Pleasure is a byproduct, not a goal. Chapter 3 Silence. We live, we live in the most talkative age in history of the world. It would take 10 or 15 million men in previous ages to communicate to others the same information which one person today provides in a single broadcast. The world is in danger of becoming like a turnstile that is in everybody's way but stops nobody. It is a place where we look into everything but see nothing. There's a quote over here that I like. It says, A fool. A fool cannot be silent. A fool's voice is known by many words. And if you read the Bible, here's the scripture with that with where that is. Repose. Never before have men possessed so many time-saving devices. Rest. 
repose, true leisure cannot be enjoyed without some recognition of the spiritual world. For the first purpose of repose is a contemplation of the good. There's a quote here that says, God saw all that he made and found it very good. That's on Genesis 1.31. There's also another quote that says, Come to me, all you who labored and are burdened, and I will give you rest. That's Matthew 11.28. Self-inflation, chapter 5. Egotism, the enemy of inner peace. Never brag, never talk about yourself, never rush to first seats at table or in a theater, never lord it over others as if you were better than they. Proud people think themselves to be better than they are, and when criticized, always believe their neighbor is jealous or has grudged against them. There's a quote here that says, The virtues of great men served me as a modern mirror in which I might adorn my own life. Desire Chapter 7 There's a scripture that says, Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Matthew 6, 21 Another scripture that says, Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Matthew 21, 31 Chapter 8 Sadness The wise man said, Cast sadness far from thee, because it has killed many, and is good for nothing. I do not love myself. This is not an inferiority complex. It is rather the higher part of the self looking down on the lower part and re reprimanding it for its pitiable condition.
to some minds, it may seem far-fetched when it says, If you are suffering, pray. James 5.13 Actually, these words touch on a profound psychological truth, for they imply that we must be reconciled to ourselves in order to be happy. The Savior said that each one of us is of more worth than the whole visible universe. Matthew 10.31 and Luke 12.6 Moods Our blessed Lord advised us when you fast do not be sad or wear a long face as the hypocrites do. Matthew 6.16 It says, Then he cautioned his hearers to so dress themselves that no one would know they were fasting. Sadness is atheistic. It is not Christian. It is atheistic not only because it shows a lack of faith, living one with no invisible means of support, but also because it robs one of hope, as day adds to day, and the lease of life runs out. Many who have an empty stomach or a trial on the inside, placarded on their faces, register it in their voices, and show it in their actions. Their disposition is either morose, taciturn, moody, grouchy, bitter, or sharp. In other words, they are sad. Mental cases are increasing. Human beings have always taken for granted that there will be in their mind, in their midst, a few unfortunate individuals whose mental outlook would be warped and unpredictable. But what is disturbing today is the number of otherwise normal people who in popular language are cracking up. Some are young, otherwise happily married. Others are in midlife with apparent security. But regardless of the age group, as a, as a good American psychiatrist wrote, mental cases are the stepchild of modern civilization. Loneliness. On the level of ordinary life, there is perhaps more loneliness today than in any previous period of history. Children are lonely because they are teased, because of favoritism shown to others because five million of them live in broken homes or because their mothers are at work all day, returning at night to say as one mother did, I had almost forgotten I had you. And I'll stop right here.
finish the last four chapters to summarize them later on. Like I said, you don't have to agree with this. This is mainly just a reading to help you fall asleep. relax you and maybe just give you some sort of different perspective about these specific topics we are all human we are imperfect there is no perfect soul out there but Let's just be the best person that we can be. I challenge you to perform a good deed once a week at least. If you have performed a, f a good deed, char a charity or um, helping someone cross the street or help someone after a car accident or giving advice to a little boy, a little girl maybe giving some food to homeless people something share it with us you for tuning in today. This was Finding True Happiness by Fulton Sheen. <laughs>